um, Alexandria, I have a question from Amy. Um, her question is, green activism is very good, but as everything is turning around industrialization, isn't it better to change the way of our industrialization to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and fight against climate change? Yes, I mean, definitely. And that's one of the things that we push for a lot in the youth climate movement. I think that one doesn't have to come at the expense of others. Other, I think that both happen in the same in the same area. So in the youth climate movement, what we push for a lot is systematic change. And so we realize that our, our global greenhouse gas emissions, 71% come from 100 companies all around the world. And so that's why we need to push for systematic change. And that's why we haven't put the sole focus as well on individual actions, because it's important that of course people stay aware of their um, personal carbon footprints and, but then it's also important to realize that when it comes to individual actions, we all need to take the individual action of coming together and joining movements and um, making our voices heard. And so um, also the fossil fuel narrative, um, the fossil fuel industry was the one that created the narrative around individual actions. And so it's important that we have that focus on systematic change in order to get the climate action that we need. Thank you so much. Um, our next question comes from Ivan uh, to you, Giannis, and he asks, what is your opinion about the Global Pact of Environment, which is being discussed in the General Assembly of the UN? Can we say it is a global Green New Deal? Unfortunately, no. It's a good thing that it's being discussed, but a global new, Green New Deal has to answer very specific questions. How much? And in my estimation, we need 10 trillion a year, US dollars. And where is it coming from? Uh, our discussion here, for instance, is wonderful, and it's very important. Uh, we need to empower people, right? Similarly, the discussion of the UN, but it's not enough. We need to create the popular movement, uh, including in the UN, but not just in the UN, that is going to force our governments to create the fin public financial instruments that will channel $10 trillion at least every year uh, to the green transition, especially in the context also of the you know, transition of wealth, transition, transfer of wealth from the global north to the global south. So let's not, you know, fall in love with our own uh, activism and think that just because we're having wonderful conversations and similar conversations are happening in the UN that we've succeeded. No, let's celebrate when we start putting $10 trillion every year into the green transition. Thank you so much. And our last question is from John E and is directed at all of the panelists. Um, so I will let whoever wants to vie for the answer first. Uh, with the increasing popularity of the SDGs, there's an increase in political opposition for their implementation. What are some examples of nonpartisan policies at the municipal level that have been successfully implemented or that we should strive to implement related to the SDGs and 2030 agenda? Well, uh, let me, if I may, if I may, uh, pardon, Senor Castro, me permite? Sí, por favor. If I may, uh, not only, uh, not only what we see in, uh, of course, in uh, Mr. Castro's uh, work, uh, I lived for many years in, in Los Angeles and uh, Mayor Gassetti uh, has articulated a very, very uh, important framework here, bringing multiple stakeholders. I'd like to say also that the city of Boston, the city that gave us Gina McCarty, just appointed, uh, a graduate of UMass Boston, I, sh I should say, just appointed by um, President-elect Biden, as well as John Kerry. There, is, uh, uh, there are vehicles and foldings in citizen municipalities, very concrete, concretely moving to framing, developing actual solutions but let us be clear, this will require a cultural change. It will require a cultural change against from la cultura del descarte y la cultura de la indiferencia 
hacia la cultura de la fraternidad y la cultura de la solidaridad que el Papa Francisco nos enseñó ayer y desde su principio de su... Por lo tanto, cambio cultural significa cambio de, en los sistemas de educación. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chancellor. Chris, if you want to give your 30-second tidbit of that, we have to wrap up the session, but I want to let you uh, have a chance. Thank you, Kayla. And I just wanted to mention there is a, a number of good examples that we're seeing around the world that are centering in cities uh, focused on affordable housing, uh, trying to change zoning codes to enable uh, more urban agriculture within our community so that we can help meet our local food demands. There's a lot of movement going around uh, around energy efficiency in our homes and our buildings. That is something that regardless of political spectrum, people are willing to get behind because it means that we're reducing expenses, we're reducing emissions, and at the same time, creating jobs and investments. So um, there are many, many examples. I encourage you all to look at uh, um, the C40 uh, city network that Mayor Eric Garcetti mentioned, as well as the Urban Sustainability Directors Network. Um, there's great examples happening around the world in cities, and, and hopefully those are a couple uh, for you to take away. Great, thank you so much, Chris, and thank you so much, Chancellor, and to Alexandra and Eli and Mayor Garcetti who couldn't join us today for this great session. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one uh, that I'm going to pass back over to my colleague, Sam, to present.